networking is key to actually getting ahead in life. I know people like Tim Ferriss and that say, don't look at people that are on the way up the ladder, just look for those that are already up, achieve wealth and etc. That's such a nonsense. The reason being is the world changes. It's evolving all the time. So what's relevant to Tim Ferriss, he probably couldn't replicate again anyway. Um, so his assistance as such isn't really that important. But when you get people like the guys who wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad and the guys that wrote um, or Brian Tracy that wrote Eat That Frog, their formulas are based on specifics and processes. So it's a change of mindset. Those things stay the same. But I don't rate Tim Ferriss, I'll be honest with you. Um, especially when a lot of these things are borrowed for his book. Um, but the important bit here is networking. Networking builds everything. You know, because even though Tim Ferriss goes on about outsourcing everything, eventually outsourcing yourself is just a stupid thing to do because you basically made yourself expendable. Um, it's not something you want to be doing. What you want to actually be doing is actually reevaluating what you're doing so you can streamline your processes so that you're utilizing your strengths for more more projects, etc. Rather than getting absorbed with things like accounting, doing logo design, etc. Unless you're a logo design company, uh, you know, if you're Saatchi and Saatchi, you might actually want to sit there and do the designs. <laughs> but anyway pushing all that aside. The important thing here is networking because you never know where networks are going. This is what I'm saying. It doesn't matter if somebody's below you, above you or whatever. It doesn't matter. I know people that had ideas and sat on them for years and then suddenly become multimillionaires. Uh, for example, my lecturer that did my robotics and computer studies, um, he he originally worked for the BBC and was my lecturer for years and he didn't have his papers as such so he was underpaid at the university but the the point being is he then came up with a system for building budget robotics you know for welding robots and stuff so he went from a zero to a hero in no time but he also took several of the students that were in my college. Why wasn't I one of them? Um, because I'd left a couple of years earlier. <laughs> but the whole point being is you never know who's going to go where and why. This is why you'll see a lot of the guys that are wealthy have this fake persona of everybody's my friend. They're completely neutral. They're completely... Uh, non-negative. Non-negative means that they have no negativity whatsoever. They don't discuss what's wrong or anything like that. They don't even entertain it. They're always upbeat. I find it a little irritating because I like to know when people are having problems or how people got from A to B. You know, some of my best ideas come from sitting with a limited budget and knowing I need to make money. And it, my friend Leo was saying the same before because he's now gone back to the Philippines to do his um, cigar business. Because he was in the UK, he can't stand the UK anymore. His wife's gone off to Switzerland and I think they travel backwards and forwards. But the whole point is, in the UK, it doesn't encourage business. I don't care what anybody says, it does not encourage small business or even medium-sized business. It's basically sold out to the corporations. But the point being is he's got ideas, he's sat there, got a load of ideas, and the UK likes you to be stagnant. It likes you to be unemployed or in a job which is menial, you're not going to really have any impact that's going to make any major change. And it's what Leo was saying, because he had the same experience in the Philippines, where the Philippines, because you're reliant on your, your brain to your income, you're a lot more active in making money. You see ideas and you make ideas all the time. Bam, 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 bam. I mean, you see some of the stuff I get up to, like building those peso peso machines and stuff. I do whatever it takes. At the moment, I'm in Spain. I'm still in a bit of holiday mode, but I'm starting to go, okay, this needs to be done this week, and starting to get the wheels up 
turning. Uh, for example, of buying a car. So the first thing is, I'm not talking about spending money for a car. I'm like, how am I going to recover that money that I'm going to spend on it? So the first thing is, I see that as a debt. I don't see that I just spent money. I see it as I have to recover it. So this is where your mindset changes. This is why it's important to deal with people that are of a similar way of thinking. Leo, I actually bumped into accidentally because he was a tenant on one of the properties I was um, the um, surveyor for. And he had some problems there, so I got to look at it, and I heard his wife speaking. Um, I think she was. I think she was speaking Tagalog in the background. So I asked if his wife was Filipino, and then next thing is I stopped for dinner, and we've become friends ever since. But the point being is similar mindsets. And this is one thing that you don't get in these books. The books don't tell you about this bit, but that is the key element. Because it's like one of the guys that reads, well, watches these videos, is doing tire plants, for example. Uh, they do recycling tire plants and convert them into energy, etc. Now, that may seem so random, but at the same time, I've got another guy in the US and UK, their, their combined business, they do uh, bacteria identification for water purification plants. Both businesses sell well in developing nations because that's where you need this stuff more than anywhere else. So the fact is, there's an enterprise there. And they can network. I haven't set it up yet, but I was just doing this video, I actually thought of it. These two guys could actually do a networking together because they'll be operational in different countries, but they can sell each other's products. That is the power of the network. And at the same time, when you're sat there at 3, 4 in the morning, got a presentation to do, you sat there, you know, got writer's block where, okay, I need to get this finished because the guys are coming at 9 a.m. I've got to have this done. I've got to have it written up. I've got to have all the slides done. And you're sitting there with writer's block, you need people that just prod you in the right direction. You need people that will go Skype you or something or email and say, how's it going? How's the presentation going? I'm stuck on this. And they might throw you an idea. But the other side of this being is you've got people that are driving you forward because they're in the same boat. They'll go, okay, yeah, I was doing that last week. <laughs> I know how it feels. Because a lot of time, other people around you can't connect with this they don't understand it but this is what separates us from them you know to push forward you have to come up with these ideas you need to push forward it's like these videos you're probably noticing they're slowly getting better it's because I'm evolving and developing my camera skills which at the moment I still mark as poor but I've got some software to take out fisheye for example I've got some software that will help stabilize some of my videos until I get better at stabilizing them with the camera myself. So it's a constantly evolving program. And getting back to the guy that's still sat there, that's got to get the presentation finished, sleep, shower, and present within a few hours. Getting people call you up and say, well, I know how that feels, but you just need to get on. And maybe they throw an idea in there. That is what this is about. This is the power of the network. People don't talk about that bit, but the network is often where you will get that push that will make those positive changes because you're not on your own. Because being on your own can often cause doubt because if you're sat there and you're going, well, I don't know if I can do this anymore because you're tired, worn out, etc. But if you get your friend, Todd, the does something completely different, but you were talking to him last week about um, graphics design for his new store or something, and he calls you up and says, "Look, come on, you, you know, it's only a few hours. Just get it done. Once it's done, it's done. You know, get the presentation done, and then you can go back to bed for a few hours. Hopefully, you've had to set some sales by then. That's the way to drive it forward. There's the end line. Push for it. You know, you sometimes you need that person to just shove you over the line, and that's why I say." You need people that network with you and aren't just sitting on an ivory tower going, oh, look at me, I'm wealthy now. Oh, look at me, I'm so fantastic, I love myself. Those people are worthless. They really are. But the important people...
can sit at the top, middle, bottom, or not even have an idea yet. That's why it's important just to keep the network going. You know, network things, if you know somebody's struggling, just throw them a line. You know, a few people will tell you, well, if I told you to tell them to tell you, they would. But there's a few people alive today because I helped them through some difficult times. Whether it's me throwing them a line of work, whether it's actually helping them through some difficult relationship stuff, doesn't matter. You know, at the end of the day, it's helping people out that are friends, people I know, people I communicate with, etc. I have no issue with doing it because I know if I hit on a hard time, they'll be there for me. And that's the power of the network, which is far greater than financial wealth. Financial wealth can come and go. It's, it's not important. Um, but I know we're talking about getting from here to here in finances, but you won't do it without a strong network anyway. But I have yet to see a book that actually discusses how important the network is. And the fact is, it doesn't matter who you're networking with. Um, although several will actually say that you should use peer groups that at the same level and above. I, I don't agree with that. I really don't. Because you never know who is going to do that. And it's very easy to do these days. Um, I mean, in the FM industry, a lot of it's not, a lot of that stuff's done on the uh, golf course. So it doesn't matter how good you are at your job, you may find somebody leaps three levels because his um, father is running a contract that your company is looking to get involved with, and suddenly the father calls in a favour for the option to get the contract, which is to promote his son up to a director from being a supervisor. Um, and yes, it does happen. And I know some people say, no, you're not allowed to say that. Um, but I haven't said which companies do it, so they can stuff that one. Um, but the, the point be, you never know. You don't know who is at the higher level, who is this. Is. But also it's important from a learning point of view that you look at everybody. Because you'll find people like the IT guys, for example, the guys actually do the stuff on the ground are normally a lot smarter than the guys that manage them who did a management course. They didn't do a IT course. They don't understand how the systems run. And they may advise you on how you should spend your money on your IT infrastructure, where the guy that actually does the IT will actually tell you how to do it on the shoestring because the guy at the top doesn't know what they're talking about and he's only mimicking the stuff they were sold by a salesman. All that stuff comes from networking from the bottom to the top. And at the same time, I still have, even now, people that sit above me at director level and large businesses, the corporations. They mentor me um, because we interlink still, because some of them find it quite interesting what I get up to, because they find me a bit of a smart rogue, I suppose, because I won't follow the corporate world because I do what I want, but at the same time, a lot of the stuff I put forward, they know the businesses need it, and it's just like, yeah, you should do that, you should do that, focus on that, that's a good idea. So I do get some of that, and they'll also push me in the right direction for people that can also assist with pushing things to the next level. For example, there is a association federation of directors that's based in London, where you can put forward an idea, and they will help you take it to the next level. Yes, it will cost you about £500 to join them, but it will give you some very influential and powerful people that can take your business to another level via even just laying it on the table because a lot of those people in that same room have the power of a network much stronger than yours. So if they could see real potential, you may even get sidelined and said, let me help you with your business. I've got a few ideas for you. You never know where it's going to take you. And this is why I say that it frustrates, frustrates me with Tim Ferriss because he, he got lucky. That's, that's all I can say. And Luck's never actually pushed in any of these books either because, I mean, I, there's a lot of hard work and I do get frustrated when people say to me, oh, Matt, you're lucky. And I'm like, yeah, but I've been doing a 16-hour week for the last how many years? It wasn't luck. It's because I work stupidly long hours. But anyway, let me know what you think.